ones are Flywheel in the US, SoulCycle, that's the big one, valued at a billion dollars. Peloton, which is also valued at about $1.25 billion. So in New York and LA, it's established. Uh, in ASEAN, it's still quite new. When I first started, I couldn't really get funding. <laughs> yes, of course, because all the investors, all these rich people are like, are Jakarta's even active? I usually sit on my ass. And then I went, actually, if you look at the data, Jakarta's are active. So when I mean that, there are actually two to three, I don't know if you know this, this is strange, but there are two to three fund runs pretty much every month. Isn't that true? Right? Two to three fund runs every month in the city attracting thousands. That is more than Manhattan. It is. It is more than Manhattan. Car free day attracts a hundred thousand people a day. So, if you look at numbers, yes, we are actually active, but we don't have a lot of options. On that note, in 2015, when we opened the boutique fitness scene, um, it was still at its nascent stage. Uh, in fact, it is still at its nascent stage to this day, but it's growing very rapidly. It has grown 200% year on year. There is now a boutique studio opening every month. When we came in the scene, there were only four, period. But after us, more started coming. And then in our third year, we grew to a 30-person team, which is actually still quite lean for what we are. Um, and we have five locations for 2018. Uh, but most importantly, we've shown that we can grow as a lifestyle brand. So we've collaborated right now every year with more than 70 plus uh, leading lifestyle brands. Uh, Biko Group, uh, Potato Head, Salo Soft in Singapore, uh, La Bonita also from Singapore, um, Nike, Adidas, you know. So what I'm trying to say is, passion isn't enough. It's not what you want to hear. Sorry. Passion can help drive you, but what you need is a commitment. If you're an entrepreneur, you're a business. First and foremost, revenue, cost, that's who you are, okay? So how I committed to it was I wanted my goal, you have to set your business goal, okay? You have to set your personal goal. My goal is to build a lasting lifestyle brand. Lifestyle, not fitness. Meaning, if someone in Makassar pakai baju right, then dia nggak pernah ngerai, cool, I find that a success. That's me. Okay? Two, after knowing that that's my personal goal, I need to create a business that will get me there. My business has everything to do with my culture, but my culture is a commitment to data. We are extremely numbers driven, extremely, the whole entire company. Uh, we take, uh, we're very data driven, very ana analytical. A lot of it is because of my corporate and my finance background. Everything has a metrics. We take uh, data on customers, where they're from, uh, who are our majority uh, customers, their cohort analysis, everything. Everybody has a number. Our database right now is, I don't know, 4,500 thousands uh, easily. There have been more than 10,000 rights taken. And out of all that, I know exactly who's using uh, right the most, who's uh, consuming the product with the highest, uh, which brings the highest sales, what their age range is, their income range, uh, where they're from in the city, how many people are expats, how many people are local, I have all of that. It drips down to my team. My team, every team member has a metric. Yes, including my reception. My front desk actually has metrics. But what you see in this culture is, basically, you see people working in front desk, they get malas malas on you Because they know they're going to get a salary at the end of the day. So they're just like, I'm just going to sit here. 